The alien and guardian of the galaxy known as Groot is a tree. He looks like a tree, he grows like a tree, he even sounds like a tree, but he looks like a tree from Earth, which means that Groot is made of something that you probably wouldn't expect. I almost went with Vin Treasel. Groot is an extraterrestrial from the planet X. Ooh, science fiction-y. He's a member of the presumed extinct species, the Floral Colossi. He has an outward appearance of an Earth-like tree, can rapidly regenerate and grow, and even produce light. So what the heck is he made of? Well, since Groot looks so much like an Earth tree, that begs the question, what are Earth trees made out of? It sounds simple, but it's not. Where does a tree get most of its mass? Where does a tree come from? I'll give you a second to decide. If you said nutrients, nope. While trace elements like phosphorus are certainly important to trees, they don't make up the majority of trees' masses. If you said soil, also no. If that were the case, around a giant tree, we would see a giant crater where soil was being used up. Not the case. If you said water, also no. Trees do not get the majority of their mass from water in the ground. And if you said sunlight, also wrong. It's certainly important for photosynthesis, but there's no, there's no mass there. A tree doesn't grow out of the ground. It grows out of the sky. It has taken scientists literally hundreds of years to figure this out, but a majority of a tree's mass doesn't come out of the ground. It really comes out of the sky, from carbon dioxide specifically. There's a lot of water in a big tree, but when photosynthesis occurs, only the hydrogen atoms of that water are making it into the tree to be combined with carbon dioxide to make glucose, which feeds and grows the tree. Carbon dioxide is a lot heavier than just two hydrogen atoms, and so upwards of 90% of a tree's mass comes straight out of thin air. If a tree is made mostly of air, then it means that Groot can't just grow or regrow wherever he wants. Even though Groot is a space-faring tree, if he is anything like an Earth tree, then he wouldn't be able to grow in space or anywhere that didn't have a gas that a tree needed. Sorry, little dude. But we know Groot has to be an Earth-like tree taking in carbon dioxide for most of his mass because of where we do see him grow. At the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, we see baby Groot dancing and presumably regrowing on Peter Quill's ship, the Milano. Peter Quill is a human and breathes air with the same chemical composition as Earth's atmosphere. <sighs> And like all humans, Peter inhales oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide. So if the Milano probably has an internal atmosphere like Earth so that Peter and his crew can, you know, breathe, then the only way for little Groot here to regrow is to either use the oxygen like the rest of the crew is using, but unlike any tree uses, or use the carbon dioxide expelled by Peter, Gamora, Drax, and Rocket. Wait, this means that Groot, that the Guardians of the Galaxy are... Aw. Baby Groot is probably using the waste carbon dioxide from the crew to regrow the majority of his body. Every time the crew exhales, part of their breath is taken up by Groot, part of them. When Groot says we are Groot, it is scientifically accurate. At least on the Milano, the only way for Groot to regrow quickly is to use part of his friends to do so, to use their help. We are Groot. I can't legally play this music, but you can be assured that it's emotionally resonant at this point in the episode, and it's from, it's from the 80s or the 70s. Don't matter. So, what is Groot made out of? He is made mostly of air, and when he's regrowing around his friends, he's made of his friends, of the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's kind of sweet, and it perfectly fits the dynamic of those friends and the arc of their story. They are Groot! for the rest of his life, because science.
Thank you so much for watching. At Hutch the Clutch, spelled with sevens and threes, asks, under the right conditions, could a single grain of sand break a car window? Help me settle an argument. Uh, yes, at a certain speed, the ISS, the International Space Station, has actually dealt with this when flecks of paint traveling many miles per second around the Earth have impacted the space station and embedded themselves in the very, very thick windows of that station. So there is some speed at which a grain of sand could probably crack, if not go straight through your car windshield. But that speed, uh, you'd have to accelerate up to that speed and that acceleration would kill you. So I don't know if you just lost your bet or not, but someone's dead. Baby Groot looks absolutely adorable and I realize that his higher voice while also very adorable, kind of makes sense. When your vocal track, uh, your vocal track works by passing uh, sound waves, air pressure waves, through the length of your vocal track and then uh, your chords make it do cool stuff that sound like this. Uh, but the length of that track determines what kind of wavelength vibrates and what pitch is inside there. So if you had a very, if you went from a very large vocal track to a very small vocal track, you would have a higher pitched voice probably. We are good.